It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they're just going to have a limousine or just out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar today, we're at Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue. And here they have a three-hour happy hour here every single day, seven days a week. They have awesome brunches on the weekends. Mm. And during the happy hour hours, which is 3 to 6 p.m., everything is half price, including bar food and alcoholic beverages. Today's show has been brought to us by, or hasn't been brought to us yet, but it will be brought to us by. I think that's more correct. Future, Shall I start yeah. that again? Sure. Today's show in the future will be brought to us by Nola Pens. And here's one right here in my hand. Mm-hmm. The only pen made from a fallen Audubon Park live oak tree. Take a look at that, have a look. Hold that pen. Well, it's not the only one because then it they wouldn't is. have any to sell. Oh, nice no, the only ones, it. it says. The only oh, okay. pens. Yeah. This one is one of the only ones. I got it. I don't know how many there are, but apparently there are millions of them. Huh. It's made from a fallen Audubon Park live oak. It's a one of a kind, expertly crafted, limited edition writing instrument. And you can find yours at Nola Pens. Dot com. Thanks to the basics on Magazine Street, where you can get fine lingerie basics, swim and gym, sells swimsuits and workout clothes. Hangover Destroyer makes all natural products that medically prevent hangovers. And the Positive Vibrations Foundation create and encourage community through the development and preservation of the arts, music, culture and heritage. Some things that you'll occasionally find together, even here on Happy Hour. Havala Malone is here. Havala, how do you like my pen? I love this pen. What word are you writing? I think that's going to say a lot about you. I'm actually putting my signature on the table. Okay. Like I was here. Uh, what does that say about you? Why would you write your own name? I would write my own name because it is a mark that I was here. Right. On its Do you think Orleans. there's some way that... Well, it's not, actually, it's not that permanent because it's a piece of paper. <laughs> yes, they're going to take this, but you know what? They may gone. want to frame it and put right. it on the wall here because hmm. it's my be- signature. Is it worth anything? I believe it will is. Will it be worth something in the future like oh, the Nola Pens? Oh, it most Pens, definitely or? will be. <laughs> oh, okay. All It'll right. be worth even more. <laughs> Mark Sanders is here as well. Mark, what are you writing? Uh, I'm writing down some questions because I don't know any of you folks. And okay. So I'm thinking, well... <laughs> if you get too drunk... Yeah, then I get a question. These, these questions are going to be my anchor right here. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I'd You'll rather not go through them right now because you know we'll okay. just see how it all you goes. You keep writing those down. I'll come back to you in a oh, minute. Oh, I will have so. Andrew Duhon is back, of course, as always. Good to see you. Glad to be in town. Just out of the shower or what? Ah, uh, yeah, actually, nice. Yeah. Okay, you look all <laughs> yeah, fresh and clean. Yeah. And Danielle Rice is here. Hello. One of our old friends from way back. And yes. what year were you on the show? I wonder. Last two thousand and. Oh, this is a pop quiz. I didn't something. prepare. It was a while. That I sounds. It was a long time ago. 2015. Well, I think it was 2015. Just because I had to look up before I came here, so I. Well, then you uh, know I'm going to trust you. I I can't be exactly sure that it was 2015, but I think it was. It's when you had a band called Nice with a Y. And that's still kicking. That's still going. Uh huh. Really? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, I thought you dumped all that. No, no. So did I give you money for a uh, Kickstarter? Project. You did. did I ever get a record? You did. We're working on it. Nick has been in I and out of town. I still never got that. I still never well, got that. Well, I don't that. know which one. No did one you do did. the first one or the second one? I don't know. Because if you did the first one, then you're good to go. I have nothing to owe you. Okay, but is it the second one I might have given? Maybe. I saw we're still you. working on it. We I didn't saw you one quite day. reach our goal. So oh, we're didn't. still oh, we're okay. still funding it ourselves. So oh, okay. It was a good launch, and now we're you know collecting the money ourselves. So, so mm-hmm. slowly but surely. If you don't get all the money... Then you don't get anything, right? Is that right? No, well, we did Indiegogo, so we got it. So you have the money. We have some oh, money. Oh, so you yes. have the money and we have nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ah, yes, okay. you know, you got really it. Spot on. You got the year, you got that ah, concept, yeah. Okay. So when we get something, you'll let us know. At some uh, point oh, in indeed. The yes. That's pretty good. Is that sort of in the fine print of that thing, terms of service, when you click on that that says you mm-hmm. might never see anything? Probably. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I should okay. read that myself. Yeah. <laughs> It yeah, should right. just be like a toggle switch on uh, Kickstarter that just says, ah, if they don't reach their goal, they can have this. You know, or, because that's <laughs> right. the whole yeah. Like if that's everyone the votes that the as they're donating. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just, like that. It's well, almost like the Facebook privacy policy, which is uh-huh. so in-depth and so long oh, yeah. that nobody reads it. They just say, consent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, no one reads any of those <laughs> terms of service. Though. Do you read those, Havala, really? Some of them I do. It you depends do. on what it is. Are you an attorney? 
No, but I actually, so interesting, <laughs> in high school, I did used to try real cases. We were part of a junior league program, and we would go to courts and uh, argue sentencing for our clients. What high school was this? I went to a Bonneville High School. Bonneville? So was a, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yes. and that put you off the law for good. Well, no, I actually, I made a determination. I was like, either I was going to become a lawyer, or I was like, I could just play one on TV. So, you know, I went that route. <laughs> so. are, you, are you an actress? I think yes, I also, um, so I've been on like NCIS New Orleans, um, a lot of different TV shows and things like that. Has anybody mm -hmm. not been on NCIS New Orleans? Have you been? I you have, Mark, have oh, you been not on? Not me. No, 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 no. I, I, I stopped my extra work a long time ago. My acting career ended a while back. I was, my, my vehicle was on an episode of Treme one time. <laughs> and my, my, my dear long-suffering parents, I told them, I was like, look, my truck was on, on Treme and they thought, <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. They watched every single episode just Looking to see which truck. one my, my truck was <laughs> nice. was on in your the background. Well, I tell you what, I those, guess so. Those people must love you because that was painful as hell to watch that show. Uh, was it? <laughs> oh no, my god! Wait, Did you watch every episode of Treme? Really? Oh god! No, 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 no! I watched I think the first two episodes, and, and I could it. see. Well, the thing is, Grant, what I what I realized is they were trying so 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 hard to be like. Insider New Orleans right. make all every single like uh -huh. little obscure reference reference yeah. to New Orleans. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was something that got a little bit tiring after a while. It's yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I right. understand. The, I, I speak this language as well. I would have preferred if they would ditch their sort of trying to make it real and just went for some actual drama. Yeah, even if it wasn't nice. true. Did you act, would you watch it? I didn't Can really I watch the show. Watch I think that. I watched like maybe one episode because I knew Lance Nichols was in it okay. and uh, Candy Alexander. And so I watched like one episode and that was pretty much it. But aren't you supposed to be an actress? Aren't you supposed to have been in Tremaine? Are you supposed to be? <laughs> Weren't you supposed to be in it? Wasn't everybody You're in supposed Tremaine? to be in everything. Like everybody's in NCIS. Yeah. Every single opportunity that I uh, every you know. People made a lot of money out of Tremaine here. Yeah, they did. When they were going. Absolutely. So why weren't you in it? You've got all the qualifications. Yes. I do have all the qualifications, yeah. but I also do more than just acting. Right. Uh, so um, a I know, because yeah. you have your crown over here on I the table. I do. I can check this out, everybody. <laughs> that is that is the crown, and like a beauty pageant crown. Mm -hmm. Yes. And was, are you actually a beauty, is it a beauty pageant that you have this crown for, or is it some other kind of pageant? Mm -hmm. So I am Miss Louisiana Universal 2018. And so, yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's M S Louisiana, yes. not M I S S. No. Okay, so let's break this down. You're Absolutely. Miss Louisiana Universal. Yes. Yes. What is that, actually? So Universal is a pageant system, and so the pageant world is a pretty big world of its own. Right. And so you've got Universe, Universal, America, and <laughs> his Google glasses. <laughs> yeah, Mark's got his sunglasses on. Yes, he does. It's like a real media a very superstar. cool sunglasses. Your star is shining so bright. <laughs> That's all I can do to not go blind. Okay. You look good with these glasses on. I think it's a good look. Oh, well, thank you. You look good with your glasses on as well. Well, I have to wear these, otherwise I can't see shit. <laughs> Understood. But what do you see through these? What does everyone look like? All I see is beauty and magic. Right, it's nice. Okay. All day, every day. That's the light <laughs> does right that there. disappear yeah. when the glasses come off? <laughs> well, then why take them off? I only take them off when them I go on. to sleep at night. Yeah, right? Exactly. I like that look. I love it. Okay. So yes. tell us about the beauty pageant. Yes. And so um, as a little girl, I always like wanted to be a princess. And, you know, as I got older, because, you know, we go through struggles in how, life. We how lose. little were you? How little was I? When you went, I mean, like, this is before like really, Bonneville High School. Oh, yeah. This okay. Is, you gave up the princess thing. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Okay. I had totally given up my dreams of, of you know, because I didn't feel like I was the ideal look or, you know, I didn't have the things that would make you a beauty queen. Um, and so... It was just kind of like one of those, oh, nice to, woulda, wanna, shoulda, coulda. But then I, I let that go for, for many, many years. And I came up on my 35th birthday, and I was just like, you know what? What's my next chapter going to look like? And I had done so much self-work and had worked on my level of confidence to such an extreme that I was like, you know what? I want to be a queen. And I started doing the research. You started doing beauty pageants at the age of 35. Yes, I had never done a pageant before, like nothing. Wow. <laughs> and I started doing research, and, and, and this was such a mind-blowing thing for me. Anything you want is available to you, no matter what age you are, how young, how old. Anything you want is available to you. There's a category for you. There's beauty pageants for women in their 60s. Like, there is something for everyone. Okay. I yes. Would, I think, if you could drink there, I would go to that. 
I would go to that for sure. You know, the sixty-year-old just like pageant. hang at a bar and watch. You know, a sixty-year-old women own it. I would see. Amen I would watch that. that. You know, that to be able great. to, no matter what stage in life you are, to yeah. step into your confidence and your power yeah. and your beauty, yeah. and not have to attest to or kind of. Um, step into what everybody else says it should be mm-hmm. based but, but off what you saw in a magazine. Question, though, but isn't that the big question? Mm. Why did you need the affirmation of other people oh, to no, tell no, you no, that no. you're it fabulous? It wasn't about needing the affirmation oh, of other people. It's about Stop your right there, Grant. What, well, what made you want to be in a competition? <laughs> what made me want to be able to be the queen that I saw myself being when I was a young girl, it wasn't about outside affirmation. It was about internal confirmation. But, then, but, but a beauty pageant mm-hmm. is other people judging you whether you like that or not. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Baby, when you walk out on the street every day, somebody's judging you. Yeah, yeah, but mm-hmm. but you can and, and ignore that. And you choose that. to walk out that door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can you can ignore. And that. you're right. You're right. You don't, you don't have to worry about what people think of you. That's irrelevant. And I don't. Okay. So what made you <laughs> what made you want to have this affirmation of a panel mm-hmm. of judges telling you that you really are beautiful? Oh no, it's not about them telling me that I was beautiful. It was about being in a place and space in my life when I knew it and was not afraid right. to get on a stage and be able to show it. Okay, and what if you hadn't won? So? She wouldn't have cared. I went to the, the Miss Un- So after the state title, you go to the nationals. Okay. I went to nationals. I came in fourth runner-up. So <laughs> technically, I didn't win, but guess what? That's I'm pretty cool. <laughs> You're the fourth best-looking person in America. Well, see, but here's the thing. It's, it's oh, beyond Pretty impressive. Looks. Fourth universal. <laughs> what, what does that in mean? In the universe, right? Exactly. <laughs> A fourth best-looking person in the universe. No, it's the beyond looks. Because it's also about what you choose to use your platform for. Okay. What you use, you know, that... Um, what you do with the title, not just about, oh, how pretty can you, like, how great do you look in a, you know, a gown? That's not what it's all about. And when I started doing my research into pageant systems, that was some of the things I was looking for. Right. To be able to look for, what is this really about? Is it just about having a pretty face? I mean, yeah, I got that. But what else? Mm-hmm. Well, what else was it about? Yeah, it was also about the humanitarian work that you do. Matter of fact, through okay. my platform, I ended up um, becoming a gold medal recipient of the President's Volunteer Service Award. What year was that? Last year, 2018. This president? Yes. You got an award from president? <laughs> <laughs> You're the most interesting person I think we've ever had on the show. In <laughs> nine years we've been. I was like, You're, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you got a, a medal from President yes, Trump. A gold medal. Did you get it presented medal. by him? No, they sent it to you. Do they? Yeah. Just in the mail? It just shows up? <laughs> so um, What's when we go it? to our nationals, um, they will bring the awards because it gets sent to the um, to the actual director of the system. And so we um, got presented with our war- awards at uh, our nationals. But this, yes. but you got the president's, what is it called? I'll show it to you. Can you? Yeah, it's, the, what it's is it called, called the president's. president's Volunteer Service Award, and I received, I was a gold medal recipient. Well, that's impressive, right? You have <laughs> to admit that, Daniel. Have, you, have you gotten any awards for I anything? I support it. Have yeah. I gotten any awards? No. Nothing from no. the president? Never Nothing heard from, from the president, president Trump or anything? No. You've done a Not whole yet. interesting thing since we saw your life. You've got, you've got a whole new band with a whole I new do. A whole new sound. Band. Yes. Sound, I mean, and you have an electric guitar. Maybe some know. sand too, but some mostly sand. new sound. And you have an electric guitar. Here's the middle. Oh my God, look at that. Yep, it's got the stars the, and stripes uh, and an eagle on it. Yep, I'm Does it have President uh, Trump's yeah. signature on it? Can you see that? <laughs> I can't see that. Can <laughs> you see? It's too small. It's too small for me. I, well, this is why I wear these glasses. Mark can see it. Give it to Mark Sanders. Oh, yeah. uh, and a certificate? I guess you get an award, like a medal and the certificate, yes. Ooh. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, did you get it? Yeah. Do you get any sort of money? No. <laughs> so just the glory of being a... Yeah, that is I think pretty they're trying to use cool that life. for the wall. Like, Very no, nice. No, no, okay. No. <laughs> hey, listen, so Daniel, what kind of... So this is this music that, you've, that you're playing now yes. is a whole new thing. It is a whole new thing. It's got... I'm like, just repeating what like you're saying. It's got like an orchestra. Yes, it does, yeah. I went to school for classical violin, so uh, it's just kind of natural for me to write four strings. I wouldn't say it's a whole orchestra, so mm. kind of... If Sounds you're familiar orchestral. with a whole orchestra, there's no winds or brass or anything like that. It's just it's strings. a chamber. It's a chamber. Chamber orchestra. Exactly. Orchestra. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's um, when we perform with the whole band. There's cello, viola, violin. I'm playing violin or guitar. There's upright bass, drums, guitar. Sometimes there's a key, keys player in there too. A uh, whole big old group of sound. That's cool. And how mm-hmm. did you come up with this? Was it intentional? Did you put it all together? Or did I did it? put it all together. So um, you had the idea and 
in your head first. For yeah, for a, a while, I kind of um, when I write songs, I do a lot of layering and like a sound recording system. <laughs> um, <laughs> For, you know, my technology, I use GarageBand on uh, a Mac. So, okay. you know, very up-to-date. Are they paying speed, you to say things. that or anything? I wish. I you can pay me to say that if you're listening. Okay. Uh, and so I sit there and I kind of pluck around on the violin and then I'll add another layer. And then next thing I knew, it was a bunch of sounds. So I was like, I can't play all this stuff at the same time. Let's get a whole band together. And there we go. Very exciting. <laughs> and the new band is called Dianella. Yes. D I A N E L L A. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is confusing because your name is Danielle. It is it's very confusing. Got me confused in the course of this week <laughs> while we've been putting the show together. I anticipate that a lot in really? the future, yeah. Are you going to have to change your name to Dianella if this thing works Maybe. out? Maybe. I might just let people call me Dianella, or either way, I'm not C too Rock pointed about out it. when we were putting this thing together today that it sounds like Dianetics. <laughs> I guess it does. Are you familiar with Dianetics? I don't you don't know? C Rock will tell you a little bit about what Dianetics is. What exactly is it, see? I think you can do a better job than I can do. I you know. went through it, right? I've done it. No. <laughs> no, Dianetics is Scientology. Okay, was that oh. like a mental mastery program? Yeah. No, or I something? haven't. Have you done that? No. no I it's done. Ron Hubbard. Oh, Ron right, Hubbard. Right, okay. He wrote the book called Dianetics, which is. Oh my God, I have that book. I've never read it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should read it. Do you know what's on page 12? It's like how to. <laughs> have you seen those billboards? I don't think they have them here, probably. Like how to change the world, page twelve. It's and then, then page twelve tonight. I'm it's, gonna go of this book yeah. that my Dianetics. band name sounds like. <laughs> Check out Dianetics. I should use yeah, that to the my book advantage. Is like this thick, yes. <laughs> well, if it's on page twelve, it's not that far in. That's I the whole thing. Just read to page it's just a gigantically okay. thick book, and by page twelve, you've, you've already like changed the world and gone to another okay. level, another planet. Oh, it's pretty amazing stuff. You should totally read it. Especially I am going to you read have your page own self help books. today. <laughs> I can't guarantee page twelve is the best page, but I think it is pretty good. So listen, what it had I, nothing to do with that. <laughs> the name of the band. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, well, you could still change it. That would be the thing to change it to. I could change it. That'll sue you in a second. I, I wouldn't like that. Be I would huge have, news. I'd have yeah. no idea what to That'd do. That'd be with great that. news, wouldn't that? <laughs> well, Havel, yeah. I can tell you, because Havel is an expert at. Playing Pu the publicity. Lawyer. Yeah. The publicity She wrote a magnet. book called, she's the publicity magnet right here. Would that be a good idea to change the name of the band to Dianetics, the same as Scientology? It and be would not be a good idea. Would not. <laughs> okay, don't listen to me. If you want to go through a lot of legal red tape and... Uh, you'll that get doesn't and sound publicity. like my idea of a Friday night. <laughs> exactly. You know. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> okay. It, what what would, the, what would the definition of bad publicity be? That kind of the the kind that ruins reputations, that makes people uh, not trust, like, or want to know you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. That, I, I don't I don't know. I, I would I would take issue with that. I know that you wrote the book, How to Become a Publicity Bandit. But I uh, I've seen enough episodes of VH1 Behind the Music to know <laughs> to know that there is uh, there's a trajectory here. It's an upward trajectory, and then it's way downward. But then yeah. there's a redemption story. And, that. and so what I'm saying is that the kind that ruins reputations, that's just, that's just staging a comeback, baby. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves a good comeback story. Mm -hmm. People do love VH1 a really good, comeback, a good story, comeback story. But is the drama worth it for your own life's peace? Well, mm -hmm. everybody has to decide what level of drama now they're willing to true. deal with. Absolutely. Yeah, some have a higher tolerance than others. Mm. Very true. So, some people love drama. Yeah, maybe you can add that. That will be like the next chapter of your book. Yes, I can do How a revision. How to stage a good <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to tell who he's looking at with his sunglasses. Are you talking to me about your book? Or... <laughs> Daniel, you're not writing a book, are you? Uh, no. Okay, mm -mm. grab that guitar, and, okay. and I'm going to make you play us a song. Oh, maybe someone can grab it for you, even. It's pretty... Okay. So... And it's That's beautiful. Okay. Look at this nice guitar. So this is a whole new thing since you were here last. You're a violin it player. It is. So how did you? Did, I am a violin player. Did you teach player. yourself to play the guitar, or what happened? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's a very. Uh oh, there's a lot of wires. Hang on. And violin and piano, my two favorite instruments. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can play violin, I like. I'm I'm super geeked out right now. <laughs> yes. It's it's a. 
It's a great instrument. Mm, beautiful instrument. And what made you want to put down the violin and pick up the guitar? Just so you could do stuff like this? Exactly, yeah. Happy uh-huh. hour? <laughs> you happy? I still play violin all the time. Right. Um, well, you play violin in the band, right? Yes. Uh-huh. So, and I play violin in this band, too, but um, I mean, that's it's what more I mean. effective to play by yourself with a guitar. Right. It's got two more strings than a violin, so... But you have the same number of fingers, so that, like I said. That's true. Makes it tricky. Okay. So what are you going to play? Well, I was going to ask y'all what you want to hear first. Do you want to hear a happy song or a sad song first? Sad song. Sad. Yep. Sad song. Okay. <laughs> bring happy. it down, then we'll bring it up. Okay. okay. All right. Redemption. <laughs>
Thanks. What a voice. <laughs> yes, How did you indeed. like that, Havala? What do that you think? That was amazing. It brought me Thanks. back to, and I have not listened to this in so long. It used to be one of my favorite albums from Sugarland. Mm. Oh, that's what it like brought, like that same feeling is what it brought back. Like, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Mark Sanders. I'm not used to performing yes, with sir. people this close to me. I know, it's yeah. very I don't think my face is like a great shade of fuchsia right now. No, you did great. It's, it's super intimidating yeah. like this, I know. But you did a great job. You sound beautiful. Your voice is so strong, you can't even get far enough back from the microphone. It's like, I know this part is coming. I'm going to back up a little bit more. I saw you oh, ready. Yeah. Call of a voice. Andrew, what do you think? Uh, my thought was, uh, I really like your melodies. I think you have really thoughtful melodies. Thank and you. Yeah, like just you, you were thoughtful the whole way. You know, you took your, your, your earphones <laughs> off of one ear to listen. I was like, oh, you know, it took me a while to figure that one out. So, you know, you just really, <laughs> yeah, you got Very it going nice. on. It's really nice. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'm going to make Mark Sanders tell us we're going to go to question number one <laughs> on, your, on your list of notes in front of you. All right, all right. So we'll be right back after this. Okay, we're back with Happy Hour. Mark Sanders, as promised, is going to go to his list. First of all, we should tell you who Mark is. You know who Mark is? Mark is the owner of the Ninth Ward Nursery. This is what flow from Progressive sounds like in one of our many hilarious commercials. And basic motorcycle policies start at just $75 a year. I know, right? Do you think I say I know right too often? I do. I know, right? I have to stop, don't I? I know, and this right? is what that same commercial sounds like on your motorcycle. I know. Yeah, even our commercials are better on a bike. Progressive keeps you on yours. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Annual premium for basic liability policy not available in all states. Do you have a dollar hanging out in your pocket right now? Do you also have a phone in there? Well, with the 7-Eleven app, you can use that one dollar on any size hot beverage, including all coffee blends, hot chocolate, and lattes. Then you can make it yours with any combination of dairy and non-dairy creamers, flavors, and sweetener combinations. Coffee your way for just one dollar with the 7-Eleven app, plus tax where applicable, only at participating 7-Eleven locations. Which okay. is about the only business in the Ninth Ward that sells plants, as I am. <laughs> the Lower Ninth Ward. Are you in the Lower, lower ninth, ninth Ward? Yes, sir. Out in the middle of nowhere in How's the Lower it going? Ward. The last time I saw you, which was, was a year ago or so? Yeah, it was a few months ago. Was it only a few months ago? Yeah, yeah. It was September, I believe. Yeah. September of 2018? I believe so, yes, so sir. So you, were, you, were, you had started the nursery, but it wasn't a full-time gig. I get the feeling now that it's much more of a full-time business. Uh, it's, it's still not a full-time business, yeah. I, I still can't leave the day job with the benefits and the right. 401k and, you know, well, the financial security. Well, you're a security. writer during the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm a writer and an editor. I edit travel magazines for a living. And, uh, yeah, my background's in editing and journalism. So it's something I really enjoy. But, uh, you know, it's a nice uh, kind of balance between having the editing work but also getting to be outside and being among the plants being in the greenhouse it's oh yeah yeah it's it, it's really gratifying do you get to so travel many gifts uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's incredible how many people live in new orleans that can do the most amazing things isn't it yes. i know this happens every week it's crazy <laughs> I Lucky know. you, and you get to I talk know, to all to, these folks. We get to meet the most amazing range of people. It's, uh, it's astounding who's living in New Orleans. It really isn't it, Andrew? Astounding yes. who's living in New Orleans? Yes. I haven't lived anywhere else long enough to know. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like it's just a very small An town. Honest response. Oh, oh, it, it yeah. absolutely is. And something that you know, I think that what you're getting at, Grant, is just how many people live here who have multiple things that they do that they're right. that they're all good at. Not that I'm claiming I'm good at any of these things I do, but I uh, certainly... Are you good at any of them? You're pretty good at running a nursery. I, I know that I'm pretty obsessive about running a nursery, okay. and sometimes people come and they pay for for the plants that I sell, and then, uh, that allows me to continue running it. But, I mean, good's a very subjective sort Does, of notion. Can anybody steal plants from a nursery? People can steal just about anything from a nursery. <laughs> do so, do people yeah. steal plants from uh, nobody's stolen plants yet, but uh, coming I mean, at you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Thanks you for giving that. our listeners yeah. some ideas, yeah. Grant. So, what is the address of the place, and when are you not, when are you not there? What's the most expensive <laughs> plant? <laughs> what should we get? What should you get? What should we steal? Oh, from? good lord! Well, you should you should uh, you should steal nothing. <laughs> Do you have cow lilies? I actually just ordered some orange cow lilies. They're coming in this weekend. Okay. Come on okay, by, my friend. Talking. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? That's my favorite That's your flower. favorite flower? What do they favorite. look like? 
Can you draw that on the table? Can I draw? Ooh. What is it? How do you with, spell with this beautiful it, pen. Um, with a pen from who are the Who are the pens? Uh, NolaPens.com. 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 It's a beautiful pen. Pick that up in a minute. Okay, here it is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this is really, really awesome listening to... It is. Uh, well, it's on Facebook <laughs> it's Live. It's on Facebook Live. If you're listening to this as a podcast and you want to see what this sketch looks like, uh, go to Iskimo Mullen's Facebook page. Oh, you did There's a great Kelly. job, my friend. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, very Excellent. intelligent. So well, what color does calla lily come in? Uh, calla lilies orange. come in all different sorts of colors. My mother used to grow white calla lilies. I'm getting in some orange. They come in reds. They come in yellows, all different colors. Okay. They're beautiful little tropical accent plants. They like a lot of water. But, Where are you uh, going to plant yours? Have a I'm going to have to probably keep it in the pot. <laughs> what, do you not have a garden? I do, um, but there's nothing in it. So maybe I should put the well, calla lilies. What you have. Well, oh, nothing. you do they do came well to the right here place. in... Yeah, they in do New absolutely Orleans? fine okay. here. Yeah, uh, so my nursery specializes in a lot of tropical plants, and that's kind of my niche. Um, being a small, basically a one-man operation, I have to distinguish myself from what other nurseries carry. And you might be able to find cow lilies oh. elsewhere, but I do carry a lot of things that you're not going to find at other nurseries. And as such, you know, that allows me the flexibility of being kind of in an obscure part of the Lower Ninth Ward that, you know, I swear, you know, so many of my customers come down, they say, I've never even been to this part of town. I've lived here my whole life. And, you know, I've never been to this to this section of town. Um, and so it, it, it makes it kind of a kind of like a fun little day trip, so to speak. Um, Where exactly coming down is it? There. But it's near the, uh, why? Because you want to come steal plants from me? <laughs> this might be helpful. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm watching your you ass, Graham. Bye. Bye. Do you you your plants? <laughs> <laughs> what time do you close? Skinny, skinny guy, white ponytail. You're yeah. going to be kind of hard to Walk mess out. down there. I'm not going to steal any plants because uh, I wouldn't even, I mean, how do you get them out of there? Well, I mean, I'm Blown not going to tell you how to steal yeah. my damn plants, Graham. Come on, man. Is Put it? your ring on the door. No, seriously. Someone he walks up. You got a combo yeah. lock or what? Yeah, you, you need photos, like. You know, like they have the check. Put. So, um, where actually is it serious? So, so you have, uh, you know, you have the different bridges that go from the upper ninth and the lower ninth that go over the uh, the industrial canal. So, right. uh, people are familiar with the St. Claude Avenue Bridge, and then you have the big Claiborne Bridge, and then there's one that's far less traveled up north of that, closer to the lake, called the Florida Avenue Bridge. Okay, and it's uh, it's a drawbridge, goes up and down, and uh, like. Jesus, like all draw bridges go. Mm-hmm. Sorry, <laughs> this is an idiotic, <laughs> idiotic thing to say. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's a drawbridge, guys. Oh, goes up and down. Right. It's, it's, it's above the water. Vision. It's wet. And, uh, <laughs> great vision. Allows boats to go through. Uh, and, and I'm just on the other side of that bridge at the uh, corner of Florida and Deslon Street. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm really curious because to yes. take care of plants okay. takes a lot of like nurturing and a lot of time and effort that you have put into obviously creating a nursery. Absolutely. So where did that come from? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the story that I tell is that, uh, you know, I grew up in North Alabama. I'm very close with my family. My mother has always been a gardener and um, I spent a lot of time outside as a child. I grew at the, I grew up at the, right in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, and we had a basically a giant forest in the backyard. And I just spent a whole, whole, whole lot of time uh, in my backyard and in the mountains as a child. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the in the mid '80s and early '90s at a time when, you know, everybody gets nostalgic about their childhood and says, "Oh, well, things were a lot simpler back then." But I mean, I genuinely did grow up in a time where my folks, uh, you know, the term helicopter parenting didn't exist and my folks would just say okay go you know come back when you know the street lights come on or whatever and I would spend all day back in the woods running around and so I I I guess I developed that appreciation for nature as a child and then having that bit of nature in your backyard was something that always very very much appealed to me and then growing up uh, is something that's just always stayed with me and I guess it's it's kind of amped up now where were the street lights exactly (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, let's see. There's street lights. They were on if the you're, street, if my you're friend. In the woods. How would you know in the? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm picturing I, the woods. The, the I, the I don't. I don't mean to. I, I, I don't mean to characterize lights. this as like a cabin that was off grid or anything. No, I mean it was a fairly suburban environment, but it was like kind of where the streets ended um, uh, at where the, the very, very edge no of town. Name. Where the street. <laughs> Moral. Damn it, Grant. 
<laughs> okay. I'm gonna go home with the what, song stuck in my head now. Ta- what town was this exactly? It was Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was your parent? Were your parents in the missile program? Or no, was? that's funny. I've I've been asked that question so many times. No, yeah. my father. No, uh, no, my parents. Wasn't uh, that funny? Really? Well, no, but it, it's <laughs> not ha ha funny. But no. Uh, but no, it's it's a very valid question because. That is kind of like the research heavy right. part mm-hmm. of, of Alabama that brings in a lot of engineers and the space program has a has a large presence there. Mm-hmm. I remember being a child uh, when I was growing up. the The TV show Double Dare was on uh, was on Nickelodeon and uh, yeah, it was. and and the, the grand prize a lot of times for uh, for Double Dare was getting to go to space camp. I'm like, oh, that's my hometown. That's right down the street from me. Yeah. And so kids always the little pack that you, you know about like, the ice yeah. cream, about the freeze dried ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so it was like I had a little bit of cred, you know. I grew up in this town where you know there were like rockets and space shuttles and stuff, and that's where the space industry was developed. But you had no connection to that other than living there. Uh, No, I mean, your family wasn't working employed by Martin Marietta or or NASA or whoever. No, no, no. My father did when he was very young, but uh, yeah, but but then you know later on he transitioned. So why did you leave? Why didn't you stay there for it's so cool? Oh Lord, how long is this show again? Jeez, (laughs) (laughs) what made you leave? Well, I I mean, I've got a question. (laughs) Oh yeah, we haven't even got to your question. Do you want to get to one of yours now first? Well, yeah. Just tell us why you left, because well, the the reason I left is because uh, you know I grew up in a in a very conservative Bible Belty Southern town. I've always been, um, I don't know, somewhat like nonconformist, artsy type kid, and I never really fit in. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an adult now. I don't have any of that teenage angst anymore. So I can say from a somewhat objective perspective, it, it, you know, it, it just was never a really good fit for me. That said, I feel very, very much a Southerner. I still right. feel very much attached to where I grew up, and I miss it very much. Bless you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so I so I left when I was eighteen. You know, it was kind of because it was too an, small and conservative. It was and too small and conservative, and I wanted right. to see the world. And I thought, where can I go? I want to get as far away <laughs> from. That was intense. Poor right. <laughs> oh, God. The beast. <laughs> Allergies. So I, so I thought, where can I go where they still speak English? Uh, that that's as far away as possible. So I ended up going to New Zealand, and I was there for about. Uh, for about a year, and so I was doing a bunch of things there. And what were you doing in New Zealand? Oh Lord, God, I, I actually—that's where I got my start in gardening. Okay. Um, so in I used Christ to. Church? Well, no, it's no, no. The Garden I was, City. I wasn't in Christchurch. Uh, wait, are you from New Zealand? I'm from Christchurch, New Zealand. No kidding. Mm-hmm. I love the museum in Auckland. Come on, you've been museum. to New Zealand too. Yes. Two people have been to New Zealand. This woman's been insane. everywhere. I'm sure. <laughs> no, I was in the. Uh, what were you doing in New Zealand? Trying to get away uh, from Bonneville no. High. <laughs> no. <laughs> I vacation. Just vacation. Yeah, I went to um, okay. Auckland and to Fiji oh, on nice. a trip. Yeah. Wow. I, like okay. right there, hop, skip, and a jump. All oh, right. That is a good vacation. That's nice. Oh, it was amazing. And Mark, so what were you doing in New Zealand? Were you... Oh, Lord, I was travel, doing whatever I... Travel writing? No, no, no. It was long before the travel writing began. But, I mean, I was just... I, I was honestly doing anything that I could just to make a buck and get by. So, um, you know, the, well, it goes <laughs> in a legitimate for, sense. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> so, uh, prostitution is legal in New Zealand, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Was okay. it Karanga Hopi Road? Yes, K-Road? correct. You yeah. Focus so, on uh, no, I was in the Coromandel for a while. I did some landscaping there. I was down south on. I worked at a record store in Dunedin. I used to pick wow. cherries in Blenheim. I wow, painted a nice. house in Greymouth and Hukatika. I mean, I did wow, a lot you of had different a good things. Yeah, in New Zealand. Yeah, That's so I cool. did that, and I've spent the rest of my life ever since then trying to chase that sort of feeling of wonder and excitement that, you know. Why didn't you move to New Zealand, and why didn't you stay there then? Why move to New Orleans? Well, because. Uh, as you can imagine, it's kind of hard to immigrate to New Zealand, and also I, I and it, uh, you know, did it, you try? It, it just actually, didn't, well, I mean, I, I did. I honestly looked into maybe getting a. <laughs> I'm sure serious? they didn't. <laughs> you couldn't get into New Zealand. That's a pretty low bar there. <laughs> Is that true? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I did look into getting a work visa and a student visa, but you know, it's, uh, I, I think I at the time I had to offer, I had to be offered some sort of job that no yeah. New Zealander. 
could do. And so that's a very, very high bar to me. Taking, like, local jobs. Yeah, because otherwise I'd be considered taking local jobs. Well, you do have to lie about it. Well, I mean, I, I now I know I that. Like doesn't You're agree like, with let's steal flowers, let's lie to people, let's to, get bad I'm with an immigrant me. to the United <laughs> States. You have to totally lie. Otherwise, I mean, what job is there that you could not do that a New Zealander couldn't do? Maybe if I had a grant. Maybe if I had a grant and I had a Havila back then. Yes, you need an immigration attorney <laughs> is what you actually need. You exactly. just have to make it up. You want to go now? Well, thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> No, I, I have a very happy, fortunate life here, and yeah. I love New Orleans more than anywhere. You were supposed to come, and your path supposed to lead you to this chair right here with us today. My friend, you Do speak you? so much okay. wisdom, and I so appreciate that. I, I'm not even being sarcastic. No, I absolutely okay. believe you. Yeah. What were you saying? I don't know. I was, <laughs> was going to ask you to tell us your question number one. Uh, question number one. No, no, no we're going to... Are they points or questions? Uh, they're, no, no, no. They're, they're, they're questions that I thought that I might need. But, you know, conversation's going pretty well, so I may not need them. Um, you need them. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to get everybody's advice. And can we just do... Yeah, sure. a ra- and I want to include advice. you in on this right now. But, Danielle, you're the first... No, 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 no. This is coming for you, my friend. I have a hard time falling asleep sometimes. I often mm-hmm. wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning, and it's hard for oh, me to no. fall asleep. What is a good strategy for falling back asleep in the middle of the night? Well, I am a very bad person to ask that. I can fall asleep anywhere, almost any time. Yeah. Um, but if I am having trouble falling asleep, I watch Frasier. So. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. Because it's so good. Because it's so good. Because well, I've seen it so many times. It just makes me feel like I'm at home. Okay. Frasier. <laughs> okay, so you yeah, watch Frasier. I watch Frasier. Yeah. All right. Duly noted. Grant? Um, I listen to the BBC. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Ooh, that's radio it, that's on. much better. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a phone that's got tune and radio on it, or a Sonos sound system or anything that can pull that in, you can what listen is, to the what, BBC. Wait, what is it about the BBC that, that puts you to sleep? I mean, it's the people soporific. on there have the, have, have the best accents. Like, they're so aristocratic, and they sound like they have such authority. I'm right. like, oh, God, the I BBC is saying I'm going to trust It's relatively them. interesting for the few minutes that you're still awake, <laughs> and then it tends to put you to sleep because it's sort of uh, it's not that interesting. Yeah. There's it's a good cadence sort of to it. It's all about the yeah. cadence, you know? So that works for me. I find that works. Right, have, have a little. It is so interesting that you asked that question. Because literally two nights ago, I listened to a recording from Wayne Dyer. Okay. And he was talking oh. about um, awakening and consciousness. Okay. He said, he asked everybody who was in the audience, there was like 3,000 people in the audience, he asked them, does anybody consistently wake up at the same time, anytime between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning? Yes. And there was like quite a few people who kept raising their hands. And he said he wakes up at like 2.31 every morning. And he was like, he kept fighting it. He kept fighting it. And he was like, why am I waking up? Like, go back to sleep. And finally, he embraced it and said, there's something that the universe is trying to tell me. Maybe it's time for me to listen. Mm. So he said, get up, get a piece of paper, and allow whatever comes through you to go down on that paper. So embrace that you keep waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and see what value is there for you. Mm-hmm. In that time, and if it's you can good, always go back to sleep. If it's good, let's write a song, bro. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's gonna be very good material. It might just know. be like. It might just be like my grocery list of things I was trying to remember. You know, <laughs> it might it be your Havala, next you, great novel. Might be. Did you do that, Havala? Did you try that? Oh, I don't get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't taken that advice? <laughs> no, because I don't get up in the middle okay. of the night. Or if I Ever. do get up, it's literally just to go to the bathroom and then I just like stumble right back into bed. So you never have a problem. I'm waking up on the oh no no and then too I guess because my hours are so crazy anyways are I'm they? probably going to bed at two o'clock. I, do you have late nights? I you do. Stay up? I do. Um, especially if I get into like the creative process, like I and I'm such a um, I get so focused and so like centered on something. I want to get it done and I want to get it done right and I won't stop until it's done. Oh, wow. So I will stay up until I mean I've stayed up like days at a time. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. So it's like the opposite of ADD. <laughs> Whatever that like is. Hyper focused. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you can't stop. Yes. Rather than you can't get started, you yes. can't stop. Well, that's an interesting. <laughs> what do you attribute that to, Havla? Um. Hmm. Maybe dedication, a little bit of perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Um. 
I get, I can get like hyper concentrated and focused on things, and I have a like my mind wants to get things completed, right? And so, like, there's something that won't let go until it's done. Mm-hmm. So um, it could it could be jeans. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's worked for me so far. When you far, said that, so. I was like, like the acid wash or like the kind with the sparkle butts or no. <laughs> sparkle butts. Sparkle butts. So you know about the sparkle butts. I know butts. about the sparkle my butts. Yeah. My mom wouldn't let me have those jeans. No, but you sparkle wanted them? She didn't them? want anyone looking at my butt. <laughs> she didn't. She also didn't let me get anything that said anything like on my chest, like Abercrombie. Because when I was in middle school, that was the, that was the thing. She was yeah. like, "That's gonna grow out anyway," and she was she was pretty right about that part. But she was like, "No one, no one should be looking there anyway, Danielle." That's funny. She told you straight out, you shouldn't have people looking at your tits or ass. Basically, mm-hmm. that's yeah, that's pretty good advice. I, suppose. I don't think I'd I ever hear my mom say that phrase, but there. that's what she was implying. <laughs> like my mom wouldn't allow us to have stuff with like the, their branding on there. She's like, if they're not paying us for it, uh, we're not that's, see, that's a much yeah. better reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, we're going to take another quick commercial break. And when we come back, Andrew Duhon is going to play us a song that he's just written, I assume. Have you just written it, Andrew? I sure have. Okay, so come back for that. We're back with Happy Hour and a brand new song from Andrew Duhon off the album. This album has been out now. Your new album has been out for a year almost, right? Just about. May so, 20. Uh, well, basically, the f- one of the weekends of Jazz Fest is basically. This is what Flo from Progressive sounds like in one of our many hilarious commercials. Hi! Did you know that you can get a quote on your motorcycle insurance in under three minutes at Progressive.com? And did you know that saying hi makes even bad news sound good? Hi! You have high cholesterol! Hi! You're fine. And this is what that same commercial sounds like on your motorcycle. Hi! There's no more tank! Even our commercials sound better on a bike. And with basic policy starting at $75 a year, Progressive helps keep you on yours. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Annual premium for basic liability policy not available in all states. Do you have a dollar hanging out in your pocket right now? Do you also have a phone in there? Well, with the 7-Eleven app, you can use that one dollar on any size hot beverage, including all coffee blends, hot chocolate, and lattes. Then you can make it yours with any combination of dairy and non-dairy creamers, flavors, and sweetener combinations. Coffee your way for just $1 with the 7-Eleven app, plus tax where applicable, only at participating 7-Eleven locations. Basically the, okay. So what the happens? Right? How often are you supposed to put out a new record these days? I mean, I think 18 months. Okay. So, so are you working on this? Yeah, but 18 months ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, that's pretty short. So this is a beautiful-looking... Is this Dobro, this guitar, or what is yes, this? Yes, that's uh, gorgeous, too. Beautiful, mm-hmm. isn't it? In fact, it is of the Dobro brand. Oh, it's an actual brand name called Dobro. I, uh, okay. I bought it in college, and... Uh, wow. I don't know. I thought I just liked the... I thought I just liked the sound of the resonator thing, but it's become a... Uh, a source of inspiration. Been writing on it lately. Okay. Are you traveling around with it? No, it doesn't have a pickup. In fact, it's kind of hard to mic these things mm. uh, effectively. And I just find... That's why we that, have uh, Thomas. Right. Uh, but uh, I guess, yeah, you could mic it on a podcast fairly easily. But I think on a stage it becomes oh, it's live difficult. sound. It's a tough thing. Somehow, only got one real complaint that the deed ain't in my name. I got to find me some place I can lay claim. It's a marvel I can hardly comprehend. That a man can come to own himself a piece of land I got to find me someplace 
case I can lay claim Maybe up there somewhere in the foothills of Appalachia Maybe right down here on the coastal plain All I know is I got to patch up the landlord's walls As I hear that green grass call I got to find me someplace I can lay claim Grinds in the garden out back. Wanna look through the blackberry bushes for a little snake. I'ma spring a couple dogs out the pound, let them run around, have free reign. Yeah, I gotta find me someplace I can lay claim. Most my life, yeah, I've been a traveling. Always gonna find a reason to roam But as the winding roads unraveling I see a light up ahead For a place I'ma call Thanks, y'all. All All right, that's how it's done. Andrew Duhon, that is a keeper. I think. Thanks, man. Don't you think? Yes. Havala. Do you play at Jazz Fest? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Good. I so see that. Oh, my goodness. Good <laughs> point. Grass Let's blues. get that out of the way right now. Good point. <laughs> Havala, thanks for bringing that up. When are you playing at Jazz Fest? Uh, the mm-hmm. second weekend. Second Saturday. Uh, I, okay. I, you know what? Didn't look at the Some cubes time yet. or other. I know it's the <laughs> okay. afternoon. Uh, All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. That's, and breakfast is also a part of Jazz Fest, by breakfast? the way. Do you know breakfast? Yeah. It's the most important meal of the year. You nailed it, Grant. I'm so proud of you, man. <laughs> of the year? <laughs> yes. Breakfast, the, the most important the meal of the year. Mm-hmm. When is it? We're looking at, uh, well, May 5th, the second Sunday. You know, of course, brunch Sundays. Uh, but I think, I think, well, I, it might just be brunch. We, we might just do the second Sunday anyway. But... Uh, that, that's still coming together. Uh, right. Show Sparker and I are uh, getting it's, together to do that, and uh, it's a show. It's a it's a a show that Andrew puts on on the over the Jazz Fest, which yeah. is before Jazz Fest opens on the second Sunday. Right. It's your uh, it's your your morning fuel up with your mimosas and your Bloody Marys and some some morning jams by Jazz Fest performers. Nice. You know. Yeah. It's really great. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. I love that song. That's a real. Thanks, dude. I don't know if this is a term, but that's a real Andrew Duhon song. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks. Well, you know, I, yeah. I feel like it's a little saccharine, but I'm glad that you like it. Oh, I didn't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Mark, what do you think as an international traveler? What? As an international traveler? Yeah. What do I think? A connoisseur. Of nah, I mean, fine I'm, I'm into it, man. I, I, you know, it remind, it's got a little bit of Mississippi John Hurt in it, oh, which sure. I'm okay, absolutely cool. into. I yeah. love Mississippi John Hurt, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. When was the first time you ever heard Mississippi John Hurt? Do you remember? I know that I've been to Mississippi John Hurt's old house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's what a, was that it's experience like? The mailbox. Uh, it was special, you know? And I mean, seeing the first footage I ever saw of him was, I think, the, my most memorable moment. Let, let me think if I can remember when I first heard him. I can't put that together, but I remember seeing him for the first time in like old footage with, with Pete Seeger, yeah. uh, on that you know show, yeah, uh, together and yeah. man, just like he's so meek and 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 you know talking about his process with his fingers and, but he's amazing, like just the way that he plays fingerstyle, it's an amazing thing, and he has such joy in his vocal. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, he's one of a kind. And he didn't get notoriety until he was mm-hmm. a bit older, like yeah. in his 60s or 70s mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating, those old yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah. What was behind that song? Oh, it's just real. I'm, you know, I've been renting the same place for a long time, and, you know, I've been thinking about owning land. So I think that was one of those where, you know, the scribble of, like, a place to lay claim came uh, somewhere in the travels and then you put that in your pocket and then you mess around with that lick and you're like, oh, I could sing that. Find a place that I and they, you know, that's like a, it's a pretty uh, uh, predictable folky progression, you know, but I thought, well, that's an easy way to write a quick song and I, I, I think that's what I wanted to invest in that idea. And, I, you know, that there's some things that feel like they need more time and you want to, you want to like, ring out every bit of emotion you have about something but I think with that idea it just it was about like you know 48 hours of what this what comes of this is probably the first draft and that's what that is you know so I think that's what Daniel how do you write do you write like that a do you start bit. with an idea? You or? have such an articulate way of describing how you write a song. When everyone <laughs> asks me, I'm like, well, you know, yeah, I thought of this thing, and then I song. sat in a corner by myself until it sounded like a song. Couldn't get nothing done, I and did. I drank whiskey, and I fell asleep, I just, and I passed out, I, I woke I, up, and there was this draft And then there was a song. I, I thought of three different exes <laughs> when I wrote this. Right. Now they piss me off. <laughs> Sad songs are easier, man. Sad songs they are, are they're easier. pretty Dan, easy. You're, still, you're gonna play us a happy song now, though. I right? am gonna. I actually write way more happy songs. Though. Oh, good for you. Well, That's, I yeah. think what happens is I get sad and then I get really mad that I'm sad. Mm. I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it, it works. <laughs> um, and then I get really mad about it and then I write a song and I'm like I'm gonna be happy now, and then it ends up being a happy song. So I'm gonna grab my guitar. Okay, mm. grab your guitar and we'll have time for one more happy song. And then we've got a couple of books on the table here, too. This is a book, that, this is a number one bestseller. Yes, it is. That you've written yourself called How to Become a Publicity Magnet. It is. Who, what, how did you get to have a number one bestseller? Yeah, it's by hitting, it was a number one bestseller on I Amazon. If, I yes. guess if you're a publicity magnet, you have better have <laughs> a bestselling yes. book. Good point. You better be doing what it is that you are sharing with others to do. Can you make anybody, like, famous? Can I make anyone yeah. famous? Yeah, or, um, or not necessarily famous, but can you get good publicity for it? Can, can you do it for anybody? Certainly, I can show yourself? people how to add value to others and how to connect with the proper audiences. Um, producers, uh, show hosts, they're always looking for great guests. They're always looking for great content for right. their shows so that the audience stays engaged. And so people who have value to share need to be getting out there. You could be the best at what you do. You could be the best musician. But if nobody knows about you, mm-hmm. what good are you doing for yourself or the world? Right. And so it really is about first and foremost getting out of your own way because opportunity is everywhere. And then there is a formula that you can use to be able to get yourself more visible than when you get to that place where people start to call upon you and say, hey, I need you on my show. I need that something that only you have because we all have something unique. Weed. <laughs> how, how, did you, how, do you know, how do you know this stuff? How do I know yeah, it? Yeah, did you go to school for this or did you... Have some sort I, my, of my degree or? is in um, dramatic arts and communication, and I minored in psychology. So not only understanding, and, and when I graduated from college when I was 19, I was running a 160 million dollar business by the time I was 21. What? You're running a 160 <laughs> million dollar business? Yeah. We. <laughs> Why did you stop doing that? That sounds like a great way. I was working for Hewlett Packard at the time, so yeah. I was running a piece of their business and also their spokesperson on the Home Shopping Network and QVC. You were on the Home Shopping Network yeah. and QVC. Oh, that is a whole other fucking show. I can't believe we haven't got to that. You were actually on the Home yeah, Shopping Network. Yeah, I was Network. the on-air salesperson. Oh you were buying products what? for me. Yes. Oh, my God. Why would you want to give that up? That must be the greatest job of all time. Who doesn't Everyone want to be on the Home Shopping Network and QVC? What were you we're selling? Printers? Up, you know, yeah. Pack? yeah, so all HP products. So computers, printers. Uh, I think my parents have probably ordered for new <laughs> Why, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, I, and that format is really cool because you get to sell millions of dollars yeah. in minutes. And the immediate feedback that you're getting because callers are calling in and they're making sales based upon how that information is being presented and, you know, what they kind of click with. So um, that's definitely a very fun and Man, fast format. Right <laughs> on. What's the story? Are you single? I am. Why? I was actually on ABC's The Proposal. Like Were I, you? Yes, I was. <laughs> what haven't for you love. done? Uh, what? I didn't what? quite work out. <laughs> 
Were you proposed to, though? I didn't get proposed to. Thank mm. God, because he was not my guy. All right. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's your situation? Why are you, you're like the most eligible single person in I the am, country. I am. You know what? I think... First of all, you're the fourth best looking person in America, which is... <laughs> Right there is a selling the point. universe. In so the universe, I hadn't even thought of it. Along with everything else that you've done. And I, I hear that Jupiter's got some pretty good competition coming up this year. Bring them on. Do you, do <laughs> That'll you, be a show right do there. Do you want to be single or something? Have you chosen um, that? You know what? It's not even that. I think as I continue to work on myself, I am attracting the person who is meant to be with me. And he he is obviously someone who is working on himself as well because we haven't met yet. <laughs> so Could you be looking at him, right? Any of these guys? I, 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 it's like married, uh, married, <laughs> married. married. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, so I think so, so everything happens off. when it's supposed someone to happen. Someone is going to show up at some point. Do you believe oh, in that? Oh, I, I know that someone will show up at some point. The universe has point. somebody for you. For you really, Absolutely. You I get the sense that Havel is not the type of woman who would wait around for somebody else to do anything. Mm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah? <laughs> That's true. And, and so the, the caliber of man that would have to show up to be able to match my energies and be that right. compliment um, is a very high caliber gentleman. That's so. a s- small number of people right there. Exactly. Hey, I'm looking for the two percenters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, do you, who do you sound like? I keep hearing someone's... Do you sound like Oprah Winfrey or someone? Oh, who, my God. Who is it? That's, <laughs> Whose that's voice is it? a wonderful compliment, definitely. <laughs> I, I've, she's an inspiration to me. Is that who you sound like? Has no one told you that before? I, ha- I have been told that a lot. Yeah, okay, a lot. A lot. <laughs> so it is Oprah. Okay, on that note. Yes, give me some We have got money. to get out of here in one set. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know she is the wealthiest person in the world right there. Isn't she one of them? She's close. She's the wealthiest no, woman. Like, it's probably like a sheik or something. A, is one of the worthy. Yeah, but I mean, she's not as <laughs> wealthy. Well, probably someone we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. the most well, Jeff Bezos cool. from Amazon, I think he's the, like meant yeah. to be. And he's I think single, Oprah's but probably what? for good reason. So mm-mm. no, he's not single. <laughs> he, he just Was got it? a divorce, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's on so the market. Is he available? Single. That would be he a guy to keep up with. But you. I don't think uh, <laughs> I think the reason why he is single is the reason that you don't pick up, mm. you know, backseat. So that didn't work <laughs> out with whoever he was having an affair with. Is that right? Because <laughs> he was having an affair with somebody. That's how he got. That's the whole thing was in the. Yeah, uh, I think it all kind of came Post. out. So that all fell apart. So he's available now. He is available. You now. should definitely follow up on that. I, okay. I think I should probably. Danielle, not. what are you going to play? Now That's you know play what us to do out of here. We're done here. Uh, this song is called Catalyst. It's another original. Okay. Told him that he's not the one Cause I 
I can't stop thinking about what does it mean, what does, what does it mean? These days that we share in the portrait don't be. Feeling excellent, good job. I know it's a real close up for a sort of a rocked out yeah. experience. <laughs> Danielle Rice, and the name of the band is Dianella, not Dianetics. D I A N E L L A. And we can steal that off uh, Spotify and other places? Not Spotify yet. Working on some recordings, but you can find it on Bandcamp. Uh, probably best place right now is Facebook. You okay. can find everything from the Facebook page. Okay, and we'll put a link to it on right. our page if as well. If you went on The Voice, you would get a four chair turn. Oh, yes. she's got a great voice, right? Yes. yes. Thank you. You should do I it. I appreciate that. That's what gets your advice, Havila, as yes. a professional? <laughs> America, it, what's the one that uh, there's two New Orleans artists who just got golden tickets to Hollywood? It was uh, really the uh, America's America's Got Talent, or no wonder you the, don't have trouble shows. sleeping. That stuff will put you right to sleep. <laughs> 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 uh, whatever the one that they just um, uh, because JT, his client, yeah, just uh, he there was one of the golden ticket winners. But voice or one of those talents, do okay. it. Okay. All right. We'll do see it. you back here in one year when you get back from yes. Hollywood. Yeah, get back from All right. <laughs> Danielle Rice, thank you so much for being thank here. You, thank the name you. of the band is Dianella. Mark Sanders, if you want to steal flowers from you, we can go down to the Ninth Ward Nursery. <laughs> Absolutely. Or actually pay going. for them. And Havala Malone, thank you so much for being here as well. My Ms. Louisiana, Louisiana Universal. Universal 2018. And your best selling books and everything else you've got going on. We can find all that at Havala Malone? Yes, um, I'm on all social media. We'll find you Havala easily. Malone. It's H-A-V-I-L-A-H-M-A-L-O-N-E. Thank you so much for all of you being here. Happy Hour Today has been brought to us by Nola Pens. The only pens made from a fallen Audubon Park live oak. These one-of-a-kind, expertly crafted limited edition writing instruments add a little gree to your handwriting. You can get yours at nolapans.com. And thank you to the Basics on Magadi, Zine Street, Hangover Destroyer, the Positive Vibrations Foundation as well. Our show is produced today by Graham DePonte. Our associate producer is April Love Stolf. Monique Pyle and Christian Owner are our music producers and our technical director is Thomas Walsh. Asher Griffith is our Facebook Live feed director who put this whole thing on our Facebook Live fa page. If you want to see it, it's on It's New Orleans Facebook page. Our fact checker and social media connector is Andrew Searock. Our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about an hour while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. It's newwellness.com. We can see many other happy hours that we've made previous to this one, as well as some other shows you make around here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Raschuti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Talker, and our award-winning podcast about death called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on a bunch of time-sucking social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
program on all of it we're called It's New Orleans and you can find photos from the show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Facebook page and on Instagram these photos are taken by Jill LaFleur you can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app thank you for subscribing to us take a moment if you have one to rate and review us it helps other people find us if you're listening to us on Spotify you can follow us and get happy hour delivered each week this show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans happy hours a production of INO Broadcasting for It's New Orleans.com for Andrew Duhon and everyone else around here at Wayfair around the table and back at our office at I Know Broadcasting. I'm Grant Morris. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next week for more Happy Hour. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance.